Alrighty. Uh, thanks for sticking around, everyone. Obviously, it's getting late in the day. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a new uh, coastal photo point initiative called uh, CoSnap. Um, and this is a, a physical uh, sort of science question that we're interested in, in here, so not so much biology or ecology. Um, there's a few sort of unique innovations that we've made in terms of how we collect the photos and then what we do with them. And basically that's aimed at pulling quantitative data of beach change out of people's uh, <clears throat> coastal uh, snaps. Um, so this is a pilot project that we basically ran through last year. Um, it's pretty much wrapped up. And now we're at the expansion phase. So I'm going to take you on a journey basically from start to finish in 15 minutes if I can. Um, I just wanted to start by acknowledging the uh, project team. I'm here uh, speaking on behalf of, of a bunch of people today. Um, OEH has provided the funding for this pilot project and got it off the ground. And uh, Mitch Harley uh, from the Water Research Lab at the University of New South Wales has really been doing most of the grunt work, uh, the technical work, in terms of developing the image uh, analysis and processing techniques and how we go from someone's photo at the beach to, uh, to mapped uh, shoreline data. Um, I'm learning heaps at this conference. I'm pretty new to citizen science. This is my first uh, foray into it. And I, I took Kylie uh, from ABC's challenge uh, that every citizen science project needs a one-liner. So I came up with this last night. Uh, create accurate measurement records of beach and shoreline change with your smartphone to help us understand and predict beach response to changing weather waves and sea levels. That could be a psychom disaster, I don't know. <laughs> Give me some feedback at the end, perhaps. Uh, hopefully that gives you an impression of what we're doing, though. Um, I thought I'd probably need to cover with this audience uh, why we're interested in, in monitoring beaches, full stop. I'm not talking about the critters in the beach. I'm not talking about shorebirds. I'm just talking about the beach itself. Um, so we've got over 11,000 beaches in Australia. You're surrounded by beaches uh, wherever you are in Australia. And Australians love living near the beach. Um, because of that, the dune systems of many beaches have been developed for residential, recreation and commercial uses. And a lot of people don't realise that uh, beaches move. Uh, beaches are moving all the time, and sometimes they move a lot. Uh, and these are the types of problems that we come across when we have a big storm uh, and the beach uh, washes away. This is basically immediately before and after a storm uh, on the east coast of uh, Australia, New South Wales, in 2016. And these are some of the problems we had at, at a famous uh, Terrigal Wombrel Beach and everyone would have seen the pool uh, fall in the sea at, uh, at Narrabeen Beach. So we need to understand why different beaches respond differently to different uh, wave conditions and, and different types of storms. Uh, so how, much, uh, how many beaches do we have a good idea of how they work? Um, 11,000 beaches, about three. Three beaches in Australia have uh, long-term frequent records of, of beach change. Uh, that's at uh, Maria was the first one and captured uh, the biggest storms on record in the 1970s. Uh, Collaroy Narrabeen, probably the most famous data set, uh, monthly surveys since uh, immediately after that storm. <laughs> and uh, up on the Gold Coast, we've also been measuring beaches for, for quite some time. So that's not uh, really enough to take and apply to uh, all of our other beaches, though. So why do we need those types of data sets that I was showing there? Um, well, we need long-term records, because if we took monthly or daily or weekly measurements in this period only, uh, we would have thought that this beach was building out at 12 metres per year. Um, but we don't just need a long-term record, we need frequent measurements because there's a long-term record. If we only measured at the green dots, we'd think the beach was accreting at a metre per year. If we only measured at the red dots, we'd think it was eroding by half a metre per year. And that's the frequency of data that we have for most beaches because that data typically comes from aerial photograph records that are captured every several years. The actual trend at, at Narrabeen Beach here is basically completely stable. So with the full data set, we know that this beach isn't actually going anywhere. Uh, it just experiences a quite large variability and that ranges over several years of change to, to individual storms like this one in 2016. Um, so how do we monitor beaches? Uh, in the beginning, which was the 1970s basically, uh, basically a, a hairy coastal scientist went out with a giant ruler and a big candy cane 
and uh, walked up and down the beach and, and measured uh, the gradient of the beach and the, the shoreline position. Um, it's pretty hard to convince uh, community people to go out and spend a couple of hours on the beach every day or every week or every month uh, crabbing their way around with this sort of equipment. Um, so we know that that's uh, not something we can really roll out if we're interested in measuring a lot of beaches. How do we actually do it these days? Well, we obviously use technology, remote sensing. Uh, we can use handheld GPS. Uh, this is a, a laser scanner with differential GPS. We can drive along the beach and map it. We use jet skis to map the surf zone bathymetry. Uh, people have probably heard of uh, airborne LIDAR, fly a plane with a laser scanner. You get a lot of coverage or drones. And, uh, and also coastal imaging systems. So this is sort of a professional quality coastal imaging. So that means today we've got high resolution data. We can get incredible data. That's not a photo, that's actually drone data. So each, each of those, it's a photo overlay of, uh, of actual elevation data from uh, drone flights, incredibly detailed. Um, so we can know along a beach, such as Narrabeen here, uh, how the beach has responded to an event. And we can go broad scale. This was that June 2016 storm. We measured several hundred kilometres of, of beaches uh, between Coffs Harbour and Sydney. Uh, don't worry too much about the picture, but just the scale of, uh, of, of beaches that we were able to measure at this sort of resolution. The only problem with all this is it's still really expensive. Um, you can't go out and do this every day, every week, every month. This was a one-off. Uh, cost tens of thousands of dollars to, to achieve that type of data. So what's sort of the options if we're trying to improve our, uh, our coverage of these uh, beach uh, monitoring records? Um, the obvious one is, is the coastal imaging solution. Um, it's got pros and cons. It's been around for a long time. It's well established. Uh, it's a stationary camera with the same lens, so we know about the images we get. They're easy to use. It's continuous. This thing's been there for 10 years. Um, takes hourly data. This is again at the famous uh, Narrabeen Beach. Uh, and it's accurate, so within one or two metres of shoreline detection. However, to, to roll this out uh, along tens or hundreds or thousands of beaches, um, you need a site like this, uh, something away from vandals, you need internet, you need a computer, a power source. So it costs a bit of money, maybe $20,000 to set something like this up. Not really something that we can do large scale. So Mitch and I both sort of came up with the idea that this area was pretty ripe for uh, citizen science, uh, which neither of us knew too much about. Um, but we knew about probably what uh, some of the challenges that we would encounter would be. Um, so basically what we wanted to do was use people's smartphones. Uh, everyone's down at the beach, walking along the beach, carrying a phone. Uh, we wanted to access that data um, and basically develop these beach monitoring records out of that. So there's a bunch of, a bunch of challenges there that, that we obviously um, uh, had to overcome. Um, everyone's got different smartphones, they've got different camera lenses, different distortion, different properties. Uh, people don't stand at the same point and, and take a photo at the same angle, uh, generally. They're all over the place. Um, and they're going to be doing it at different times, different tide levels. We have all that really resolved with the professional solution, but again, a challenge to overcome. Um, people generally take a, a single photo, they don't take a 20 minute video. Uh, those, those professional cameras, they take a 20 minute video and we time average it. So you get a nice picture of where the mean shoreline actually is in that space when you've got waves washing up and down the beach. Um, so can we actually resolve the shoreline in sufficient detail with this type of data? And are people actually going to want to participate? So this is what we set out to, uh, to find out with the pilot project. Um, we had funding to roll out two sites, uh, so we chose two uh, different settings really, uh, different physically. This is the southern end of Manly Beach and the northern end of Narrabeen Beach, and that's the entrance to Narrabeen Lagoon. But also different in sort of visitation and, and usership. Manly Beach is world famous. Um, you get a lot of different people here, a lot of tourists. This is uh, North Narrabeen Headland Reserve. It's a little bit tucked away in a local community. Uh, not going to get as much traffic in that environment, but you're going to get different types of users, perhaps. So two, uh, two different pilot sites to sort of get at the questions from a physical point of view and also from a community or, or citizen science point of view. So how does it work? Well, in the previous picture, these are our signs at the sites, and this is just zoomed in on our Manly sign. Basically, people go and take a photo from one of our special camera cradles. They can submit it by either sharing it on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter or emailing it to our mailbox. They just use the hashtag. 
And basically, we provide feedback to the community. We recognise their contributions through our Facebook page. Um, so it's just, just Facebook, it's just CoSnap, so you can find that. In terms of the, um, I'll just flick backwards, the, the technology, the first little innovation was, well, how do we keep people's phones in the same place, so the same position and the same angle? And the way that we overcame that was with this sort of tilted faceplate. So we need an elevated position anyway to look down the beach and to see far into the distance. So we could sort of use gravity as our friend and have something that people could just sit their phone in. And with that solution, basically, we're only uh, exposed to the, the tiny sort of range of camera location on the back of a smartphone. So we addressed uh, one of the challenges in that way. Um, the process then was, well, how do we go from these random photos that are now taken in the same place, um, but by very different devices, very different cameras, to something that we can actually pull out a shoreline from? And the trick here is if you watch the uh, security camera at Manly Beach, this is a series of community source photos that have then been normalised, basically. So you can see the frame changes a lot, depending on the uh, phone and camera, but we're able to put those in the same uh, spatial reference frame. The next thing to do is, well, how do you get a shoreline out of an oblique photo? Um, you need to look down from above. So we've been out and we've surveyed ground control points and we're able to rectify that image into planform space. So that's the same photo looking down from above. We then need to detect the shoreline. Uh, you can do that manually, um, but as I said, coastal imaging has been around for a while. Uh, we've got the, the, uh, the sort of software algorithms, uh, MATLAB scripts to basically pull that out. So it's just pixel analysis um, using color and hue. And we also account for tide because people are taking, you can see the high tide line here, this photo has been taken at a lower tide level. So how did we find out if the data was actually any good? Well, we had to go out and do the surveys throughout the, throughout the project as well. Um, so surveyed the shoreline and beach profiles at different points throughout. And we found a pretty good result. That's our RMSE error um, for Manly and North Narrabeen. And that's a comparison of the community source coast snap shoreline versus a, uh, a GPS surveyed shoreline, how we would traditionally do it. So that's just an example of, of shorelines that the community has essentially measured and how dynamic the beach can be. This is just last week. The whole uh, entrance is now closed and full of sand. I'll fly through uh, the results pretty quickly, but the record of six months through our program, the crosses are our, our photo contributions, the red, the red circles are our GPS surveys. So you can see a nice trend of beach change at Manly and at North Narrabeen. That's the width of the beach, so the shoreline moving back and forth, and it compares well with our survey data. What we've also been able to show is that the beaches behave differently. We already kind of knew that at these two sites, but basically the community has been able to develop uh, an understanding of how these two beaches, which are only uh, a few kilometres away from each other, uh, behave differently to more or less the same conditions. Um, we didn't just want to know about the physical aspect, but, but why people do it. Uh, that's just contributions uh, through our program. You can see that the North Narrabeen site, which was the tucked away one, actually attracts more contributions than the world famous Manly Beach site. And we've got a few ideas as to why that is. Um, but we carried out a survey to find out why people do it. And they're just some keywords of what people like about it and why they do it. Um, how have they found out about it? Most people just came across it, so that's kind of good. Um, North Narrabeen, as I said, was slightly more popular. Most people were coming from locally. And most people, unfortunately, used a photo point once only, so we've got a bit of work to do there. But we know how people are getting there. Uh, we found out, interestingly, that most people are choosing to email the photo than just the easy option of sharing it on social media. That could be demographics. We also collected those in our survey. And Steve Jobs will be happy that uh, most people are using iPhones to uh, do their coast snapping. Um, I'll skip through this, uh, but basically, again, what people like about it, the positives. Um, where we can improve is of interest to us. Um, obviously more sites, uh, that's coming up next. Um, easier to upload, so we know we've basically uh, jumped on social media to make this easy, but an app or a website would help. Uh, but generally people were really positive. And the most interesting aspect was I actually wanted to know more about the process of how we go from uh, their images to the shoreline data, and they want to see more results, obviously. So I guess in terms of our pilot project, a tick of approval, 
We've been able to demonstrate that the method works and that people are interested in it um, and will use it. Uh, where to next? Uh, I'll buy you a beer if you can name that beach. That's the next CoSnap site. And uh, just to wrap up, just wanted to thank our contributors and encourage you to look us up on uh, Facebook, uh, like our page, and more information, you can find it there. Thanks. Thank you very much, Michael. So we can certainly take a few questions then. Um, so, you know, it's, I think, um, you know, I was interested when you were saying that with the email, certainly with an app, we found that, you know, still a lot of people just want to be able to submit a photo. Um, so I think offering these different options, I think we were sort of finding about 20%. So, and, you know, you, you saw that as well. Um, so not everybody's signing up to the social you media. I think it's, um, yeah, so I think yeah, that's... Yeah, I think a few insights there. I think uh, there's two things probably that the demographics um, we've, we've heard with some of the social research that a lot of people that are engaging in this are sort of in the older uh, age groups, um, so maybe they're not that big on social media. Um, the flip side to that is perhaps Instagram and things, people don't want to clutter up their, their, their sort of curated profile with these co-snaps, so there's, there's pros and cons there. I mean, Facebook allows them to just put the photo on our page, whereas Twitter and Instagram, they kind of have to have it on their profile, which is perhaps a bit of a problem. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, so basically each of the social media platforms does different things. Uh, they all compress the image. Uh, so the ones that we get off social media are smaller compressed files but they're still perfectly sufficient to, to do this kind of thing. Um, and I guess, I guess another a, a way of explaining that is, is we have another camera monitoring um, uh, project at the moment on a Rocky Shore platform, and, and we're using three megapixel cameras uh, up on a cliff that take photos that are 500 kilobytes, and that's sufficient to, to identify what we're trying to do there. So, so basically, it's not really a barrier. Uh, the email photos are generally better, but it's, uh, it hasn't proven a barrier to the image analysis. Any other questions? Yep. Have there been any, um, I know it's still in the early stages, but have there been any um, specific examples yet of where the data has been used for the actions, or is that is it too early? Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably a bit early for that. Um, I mean, obviously we've got Northern Beaches Council on board um, with the pilot project. Uh, we sort of needed their endorsement to use their space. Um, so they're really keen on it. Um, at Narrabeen Beach, for example, it's a really controversial uh, coastal management issue and it's been there for a long time. So it's already the most studied beach in Australia and that was why we wanted to use that beach because we knew we had a lot of data there and this project was really about developing and, and demonstrating and evaluating the method. Um, at Manly Beach it's a lot quieter, um, nothing much is going on there at the moment. So, yeah, I guess uh, in terms of the pilot project, the objectives of the beaches were about the method, not so much the use of the data. Um, but now, I guess we're at that expansion phase, so we want to get to beaches where we don't have data, beaches, uh, you know, more regional beaches that we don't measure. Uh, and we expect that we will be able to use that uh, data uh, in the coastal management process. Okay, any other questions? Yep. Oh wow! Um, no, it's actually pretty cheap. Um, so it's all been in-house design. So uh, basically, Mitch and his technician at WRL uh, made the design of the uh, of the CoSnap camera cradles. Uh, they just get that fabricated at a sheet metal place around the corner. Um, stainless steel. It's it's only uh, a couple of thousand dollars, so, and then it's a, a matter of installing it. Um, which is an interesting thing. Uh, we've tried to basically uh, go for a minimalist approach. Um, so we don't want to put a new structure in if we don't have to. Um, you would have noted that both of our sites were sort of just attached to existing fences and things. So but you can only use a smartphone. Um, so it can't be a normal camera. You can't fit on it or... Um, 
Yeah, well, I mean, if you had a what, like a, a, a rectangle camera with a, a lens in the corner, uh, that's sort of okay. But I guess, show of hands, who walks around with a camera that's not a smartphone or an SLR? <laughs> I don't know, no okay. one uses them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we've had just a lot of people want, wanting to still submit photos that they've taken with normal cameras, and that's why yeah, I was uh, yeah, thinking... Yeah, yeah, I guess that's, that's, some, that's, but, that's yeah. the difference, but <laughs> okay. we don't need our SLI quality photos. Oh, so. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Yep. Uh, I'm just wondering if there's been any issues with edits, and you've taken photos of edits of the people. Yeah, again, because of um, the resolution and the perspectives, we're obviously not down on the beach. Um, these photos uh, that particularly come through social media are, are, all, uh, are all lower resolution, and most of the email photos, people actually sort of paste them in uh, to the email. So we, uh, it's, it's an issue that we probably need to consider uh, in expanding, but um, no issues so far, as in none of the images uh, that are, uh, are sort of uh, database or published, uh, you know, of sufficient resolution for that to be a problem.